Hi, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today and welcome to our monthly Microsoft Teams news update. So just before we get started, I'd like to give Pexip a quick shout out for sponsoring today's news update. As always, I'm joined by Tom Abuthnot, UC Solutions Architect, Microsoft Certified Master and MVP. Welcome, Tom. Yeah, hey, Rob. Good to be on. How's things? Yeah, well, as we were just saying off, uh, off air, it's... Uh... Still locked down in the UK, so homeschooling and all that taking its toll. But uh, yeah, generally life's good. Can't complain. Indeed, good stuff. And you've got a you've got a new friend uh, on today's show. Well, who, who's that in the corner? Well, yeah, so I've uh, sure sent me the uh, the MV7, which is their USB mic. So it's kind of uh, halfway between like kind of proper studio XLR stuff and, and USB. And they're they're doing more and more in the kind of prosumer home space. So uh, thought I'd check it out. Excellent. Well, it sounds pretty good. It sounds really good. So, yeah, hey, Tom, I have to work on my mic technique now. I can't move all around anymore. <laughs> Tom, lots uh, happened over the past couple of months. I mean, we we it was now in February. Wow, it's just gone so fast. But uh, you know, what's top of your list for from a news perspective uh, this month on on Microsoft Teams? Yeah. So um, yeah, news wise, there's been a few bits and pieces. So number one for me is uh, Ribbon Connects, which is a new service from Ribbon. And the Teams important part of that is they're doing direct Teams SPCs as a SaaS service, basically. Go on, talk me through that. What does that mean in uh, in layman's terms? Yeah. So 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 Audio Code have been doing something similar as well. Essentially, you can go to Ribbon and pay per month in a full SaaS model for hosted Ribbon SBCs running direct routing. So all Azure based, all API driven, and it's exclusively for partners. So partners can essentially resell session board controllers for direct routing, connect it to whichever carrier they want, uh, any customer carrier they want, and sell that as a OPEX service, basically. So partners that traditionally weren't in the SBC space can just run these services up and sell them, basically. Fantastic. So is that the kind of direct routing as a service kind of solution that I keep hearing about? Yeah, essentially. They've got they've also got SBC as a service coming later in Q1, which is where you get your own SBC where you can play with it and twiddle all the buttons and connect it to a contact center or a third party or, or Zoom or whoever. This is specifically direct routing as a service, but it does seem like a lot of the SBC players are getting into the SaaS model as well as the traditional sell the boxes model. Yeah, indeed. Just seems so so many options, you know, to choose from, uh, which is good. You know, good for the customer. Yeah, I mean, it does make it interesting. They're yeah, and they're all very. It's a very competitive market space between kind of full telcos offering direct routing as a complete service, resellers reselling kit that's resold as a service, end users directly or end customers directly buying their own SBCs, virtual or physical. There's lots of options out there for direct routing for sure. Great stuff. Uh, so moving on, uh, number two, we said we'd talk about. Kit, uh, tell us more. Yeah, there's a few bits of kit um, happening that are quite interesting. There's a lot of kit news at the moment, but I picked three things out that I think are interesting. So, number one, the Logitech Rally Bar. So that's their enter a new entrance into the kind of meeting room bar space that seems to be really popular at the moment. That looks like quite quite nice kit, uh, and it's interesting to see them, you know, continuing to really push different models and different options in that space. They've got quite a few options now. Dare I say, Tom, they are raising the bar? <laughs> I'm sure someone in marketing has already got that one. But <laughs> yeah, if they I think haven't, they a million it. times over. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's 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 pretty interesting, but I mean, sort of standard kit in a way. A bit different is video video conferencing monitors, I think they were billed as by Dell. So certified teams monitors, so webcam and speakers built in, basically. And I think this is one of the things we'll see particularly in the, the home office environment becoming more popular is just giving someone an all-in-one unit that does essentially is a video camera, speakerphone and monitor all-in-one. I think that'll be quite popular. Yeah, I mean, it almost feels like this should have been done years ago, right? You know, it, it's, it's got to be isn't straightforward. It? Got, to, to yeah, definitely. You've got, you've got laptops that can do that and have done it for years. I mean, the cameras have never been great in laptops, but it does seem obvious that you could add a decent webcam into a monitor. And what I'd love to see is someone place monitors. I don't know if you've seen, but some of the phone designs are coming out now where they place the camera behind the screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll get to the point where we genuinely have eye-to-eye -eye contact. If we can put the camera behind the screen, that would be really amazing. 
that would be nice. And as long as they put really good quality cameras in, in, in the monitors, it would be good because, you know, you, you always kind of feel like the laptop cameras are sometimes a little bit substandard versus, uh, you know, uh, an yeah, they, de they, def they, they definitely are. They do scrimp on them. So the, the laptop cameras are not as good as external webcams and external webcams are not as good as, you know, kind of the, the, the optics you get in proper cameras or in, in phones even. Uh, it's just about hitting price points. But yeah, I think that hopefully the market will prove there is money in. I mean, the Brio Logitech webcam has been hugely popular yeah. and that's not a cheap webcam. So hopefully people will see that people are willing to pay for quality, particularly when the home office becomes more full-time, suddenly investing in kit makes more sense than maybe once a week I can get by. If it's, if it's your full-time place, then spending money on kit starts to make sense, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. One to watch, definitely. What's next? Uh, last bit of kit news, Audio Code and Yealink both have uh, IP phone sidecars coming out. So uh, it's a, just another one of those gaps where you, you think that's quite old school, but clearly enough people still want it that it warrants developing them. So Teams phones that will have sidecars with all your traditional line keys and quick dials and things. God, is that what a sidecar is? What, I, what, what I'd kind of describe as you kind of you know your bit blf your busy lamp field or yes yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah so yeah the busy lamp field in the yeah maybe that would be the cisco way of yeah, a, a box that you sl slot on the side of the phone with a bunch more uh busy lamps and line keys essentially yeah gotta feel old calling it that <laughs> yeah yeah i, I, I like sure sidecar it's a little bit trendier definitely yeah it's uh it's a definitely a niche requirement but evidently i mean these vendors won't build them and Microsoft won't invest the cycles unless there's customer demand. So there's evidently people that still want that functionality where yeah. they've maybe just got a hard phone and nothing else. Mm. Okay, so what's next on your list? Yeah, so um, that's it for Kit. Uh, I thought I'd call out five things from the roadmap for Q1 that I think are pretty exciting. Uh, so in at number one is everything that's going on with Microsoft Teams Room for Android. So recap for everybody, that was what were called collaboration bars, but Microsoft rebranded them, Microsoft Teams Room for Android. And that was really a signal that they're going at first party with those things. They're not a lesser experience than the Microsoft Teams Room for Windows from a traditional Teams Rooms. Uh, and some examples of where those are coming up to par is they're going to have support for dual screens in the front of room. So two screens, not just one, 1080p outgoing video, uh, there's going to be a center console control for them. So not just having, you know, kind of remote control, but having a proper touchscreen in the middle of the room, uh, wired HDMI ingest. And one of the most interesting, I think, is a personal mode. So running them as a personal endpoint signed in as you, again, driven by the home market, people wanting a full-time video endpoint in their home office. You can run them not as a room, but as a personal experience. Interesting. Now, yeah, that's pretty cool. Lots and it's, lots it's of home tech we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, it's definitely in demand. And, and it's interesting to see Microsoft just more and more Android being important to them. I mean, obviously, they've got their own Android mobile phones in, in the Surface division, but in, the, in, in other places in the environment, like the IP phones in Teams and, and the room systems in Teams, clearly Android is important to customers and is, is demanding these features. Thanks, Tom. What's next on your list then? Yeah, so next is a software feature, so uh, SharePoint Home app for Teams. So we talked about last month, Microsoft are making Teams or positioning Teams as the center of everything. Uh, this is an app that brings the SharePoint experience directly into Teams, so essentially your internet into Teams. So things like maybe company news or key documents or policies or whatever, that would just be an app on the sidebar in Teams and you'd get to it in Teams. So Tom, just for a bit of clarity on that, Teams, teams already displays SharePoint folders and files, doesn't it? It's kind of all part yeah, of Yeah, that's right. So, so yeah, the back end of Teams for all storage is, is, is file storage is SharePoint. What this is doing is specifically bringing the the intranet, intranet's quite an old term, but you know, the, the company home portal okay. directly into Teams. So you don't have to go off to the intranet for the latest company news or the document XYZ that you store there, the reference documents. Right. That is now in Teams as an app. So you're almost going to get the full SharePoint experience within Teams. Yeah, you would you would potentially never have to leave for the intranet type scenario, whereas at the moment you would. So yeah. modality live in Teams, but our intranet that contains like HR policies and, and news lives on SharePoint at the moment. That would be directly in Teams. 
Nice. I, I, I like that. That's, that. Yeah, certainly look forward to that one. What's next? Yeah. Number four is uh, survival branch appliances. So they're in preview now. Uh, and these allow you to have telephony keep working when your internet or your external connectivity goes down. So again, quite a old school way of thinking about having to keep the phones up, you know, in the event of a WAN outage or an internet outage. But again, there's enough customer demand for that scenario. And that's preview now due GAQ1 and IP phones are coming in April, basically for support for that. Great, Could you just paint a picture for me though on that. Does that mean, you, is, it, is this software that you would install on, you know, a computer that we, you would plug some ISDN lines in the back uh, or or some SIP trunks, but then uh, yeah. if the internet goes down, your SIP trunks aren't going to work? How does, how does it all kind of... Put yeah, so you're bang on. It, it relies, first of all, it relies on some kind of carrier connectivity that's independent of the connectivity that goes down. So if you're plumbing SIP trunks in from the internet and the internet goes down, there's no magic there. Um, you, although you do see uh, some SBC vendors now have 4G, 5G in their devices, so potentially you could carry on voice. It uses very little okay. bandwidth, so if you've got decent 4G, you could consider that for connectivity resilience. Um, but these are generally physical devices that will have either old school ISDN um, or SIP on a dedicated circuit plugged into them. So lots of our customers, for example, don't have SIP on their general internet. They might have private circuits to their SIP provider. So their internet or WAN could go down and their telephony could stay up. But it is a, it is a more high-end requirement where, for example, you need to hit X nines of telephony for security reasons and it has to be higher than just relying on the general WAN yeah. or general internet. And the SBA could be virtualized, but it just has to have a you know a separate internet connection to, for that tool to work. Yeah, yeah. Audio Codes are doing a completely virtual version. I think the others are physical with software on a uh, essentially kind of a PC card in an SBC. Mm. Very good. Yeah, good option. And what's last on your list? Yeah, last one, number five for me, uh, not a huge feature in the grand scheme of things, but for me, a real game changer. It's the ability to create a Microsoft task um, from any message in Teams. So right click on the message or essentially hit the three dots on the message and do create task. So I spend a lot of my life in Teams and a lot of my life tracking tasks. So being able to write in the UI, create a new task from any message, be it chat or channel messages, uh, is a really nice thing for me. It's one of those things where Microsoft own the task experience and the planner experience and their own teams. It's an obvious integration, but it's been a, a long time coming. Yeah, that's cool because you know we use planner as well quite a lot. And so just so I'm clear on that, that's to create a task in planner. It's not going to put anything on your to-do list or anything like that. It, it is a, a planner feature. Uh, so I think it's going for planner or personal to-do like Microsoft to-do depending Ooh. on the use case. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that too. That's, uh, that's certainly one to look forward to. Fantastic, Tom. So lots happening. We also did recently our Microsoft Teams, you know, 2021 predictions. So if you are looking for more, uh, you know, kind of interesting things coming up in the Microsoft Teams world, these aren't guaranteed, but that we did a video. We'll put a link in the description because it was superb. We got uh, 12, I think, 12 people involved, Tom, wasn't it? Yeah, we got really good responses actually from those and lots of debate on Twitter about which one was uh, the, the best prediction and what we agreed with and disagreed with. So yeah, that's, that's worth watching watching back for sure because it's still super relevant. Yeah, we'll, 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 I'd like to see what uh, which one's come true ultimately. So um, finally, we said we'd uh, plug a couple of events coming up. So uh, I mean, Tom, the first one that uh, you know is hosted by UC Today is UC Summit 2021. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, I think both events we're plugging this month are, are your events, aren't they? I've already had a little bit of a look around the uh, the site as well. It looks good. Yeah, we have a whole new experience. Um, UC Summit already is already kicked off now, but uh, it does run for kind of like three, work, three weeks um, because we've got a UC week, a collaboration week and a CX week. Um, and then, yes, the second event is uh, Commsverse, which uh, is coming up on the 10th of February, which is hosted again on the... UC Summit virtual event platform. Yeah, so Commsverse is a community-driven event and they've, they've teamed up with you guys, which is really nice to use the platform. Uh, and it's taking a very uh, kind of real world, honest approach to the realities of, of, you know, kind of the new normal cliche, but all that, all that kind of experience conversation. So it's not pure techie techie, it's about customer success, it's about real world projects, and it's all speakers that are 
in in this space and i think really know their stuff you know I'm, I'm pleased to know a lot of the speakers and i definitely back a lot of their sessions as being really valuable yeah absolutely you're all walking a walk and you know certainly it's one to, to register for it is free to enter and free to access um but it's not going to be made you know hugely available after the event so it is next week um do jump on register for the event uh, there are some fantastic uh, features as well in between uh, virtual networking and and some fun bits i know yeah i Mark, think there's some kick kick giveaways as well isn't there there's some cool stuff being given away i think we're well, giving away an oculus yeah an oculus yeah, Quest 2 head. vr headset one of these in the back um plus mark's got uh, an extra special surprise so look out for that as well but you're going to have to turn up to find out what that is uh, but you're not going to be disappointed so it's definitely worth uh, carving out a little bit of time in your calendar and that's it from us, Tom. I think uh, if you've enjoyed today's session, you know, please subscribe to UC Today News and give us you know, a quick share on social. It's always appreciated. And if you're a Microsoft Teams fan and you want to be part of the conversation, you can connect with Tom or myself on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our social links are in the description. I'm Rob Scott from UC Today, and this is Tom Arbuthnot. We'll be back again next month. Thanks for watching.